everyone, it's me. Um, so today's video is going to be, I'm going to be making banana cake. I have a couple bananas that need to be used up and so I've got my mom's recipe and I'm going to make cake. Mostly you're going to be looking at the cake and not me. Obviously I haven't done my makeup and I just look horrible. So that is that. So we will get started. A quick hello to the baby. Say hi. You say hi. You going to get you on that? You're a nut. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. There's my mixing bowl and the bananas we're going to be using. And I've already measured out all my ingredients <coughs> for the most part. And we will um, go through them. She is just a goofball. She is fine. So you'll probably hear her screaming in the background. That is her new thing uh, to do. Here's the recipe. Right. This is from my mom. So we are going to go ahead <laughs> and get started. I'm going to try and set you so that you can kind of see what's happening here. So the first thing we're going to do is preheat the oven to 350, which is what the camera is sitting on, so that's always, you know, safe. Make sure your rack is down and you don't have nothing in your, your oven. I always do that first. I think you're a little crooked here. There we go. Um, we're going to start right away by smashing the uh, bananas. Get a few things out of the way here. This banana is definitely ready. This one's pretty close. You want them super ripe. You want them soft. We are going to grab a fork. Oh, are you sad I'm smashing your banana? We're going to go ahead and we are going to smash. Uh, now the recipe calls for about two cups of smashed bananas. That was a cup that Grace just flew over, if you're wondering what the bang was. Um, anyways, it calls for about two cups. Now, I just have two bananas. And I guess when we are done here, we can throw that in a measuring cup and see what two bananas get us. So, I will smash this all up and be right oh. back. We got the bananas all mashed up here. Again, it's two bananas. We will see just how close to two cups this is. It's, or no, it's one cup of mashed bananas, sorry. So I should fill this halfway here. Just for fun, we're going to measure and see what we get. I'm sure you could, you know, have a little more, a little less. I don't think the bananas are going to be making that much of a so two bananas this size I made about I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that three quarters of a cup is what it is so close enough good thing it wasn't two but two cups we'd be in trouble all right and my mom says always use a mixer for this recipe because you want to get um, you know the banana smooth especially because you're making the Okay, so the mixer I have here by no means is nothing super duper. It's not, you know, a kitchen aid or anything. This is by fun. So it says to combine all ingredients and mix well. So we are going to start with scooping the bananas in there. Why not? If I weren't doing this video, I never would have dumped it in here, the bananas into the thing to measure it, but I just wanted to show you about, you know, how much two bananas need. Okay, so we've got two bananas, one and a half cups of sugar, and like I said, I have that all equal, a cup of sugar, one and a half cups of sugar, half cup soft shortening, I use, you should be able to see, Crisco. So I've got that measured out. Like I said, half a cup of Crisco. You're silly, little girl. Okay, half a cup of Crisco. Two eggs. A little trick about eggs. You can crack two together and only one will ever crack. They will not both crack. I will see if I can demonstrate that without making a horrible mess. 
is available. I gotta do it way down here, huh? Okay, one, two, three. See, only the one egg cracked. bowl so I don't get eggshell but of course you know since I'm filming yeah of course I get an eggshell in there okay two eggs three quarters cup of sour milk now the way to make sour milk is you take your three quarters a cup of milk and you add one teaspoon of it's ready one teaspoon of vinegar so we've got half one teaspoon. Would you go ahead and mix that up? So three quarters cup sour milk. In that goes. Then we have one teaspoon of baking soda. I just have the uh, Great value from Walmart. One teaspoon. One teaspoon of baking powder. Again, great value. We have a Walmart here in town. Obviously. And one teaspoon of vanilla. I will try and remember to post in the down bar everything. And I'm using pure vanilla extract. I do have imitation vanilla, but my mom says this is the best. But this is great value, so it's not the perfect best best in her, you know, in the real world, but it works. And the very last thing is two cups of flour. So, for that, we are going to actually start mixing already. And then I will start to add it in. Otherwise, if you just dump it in, my bet would be this is going to be a mess. So we are going to I turn this on. Again, it's not the strongest um, mixer. Kick this up on up. We are all mixed up. We are going to put this 9 by 13 pan. It has been sprayed. I sprayed Pam in it. Pam in the pan! Oh my goodness, we're right over the oven. We're hot now. Try to make sure. We get as much of it as we can. when you're spraying the pan. If you're doing it with Pam, if your dishwasher's empty, hold it over your dishwasher. You know, keep the door open and hold it in there and spray it and then let the pan go in there and you're good. So we're going to pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until a knife or fork or whatever you're using comes out. Clean. So let's see. 30. We're going to put it on 32. See how that goes. And we will check back when it's done. Say bye. When it's done, you'll be in bed. Say bye. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, guys. Okay, bye. So there's actually like two minutes left on the cake. Because I set for what, 32 or something like that. But as you can see, I've pulled it out already. I stuck a knife in it, a uh, butter knife right in the hole there, and pulled it out, and it came out completely uh, clean. Where did I put that? So, completely clean. So, obviously, that amount of time was not needed for mine. Every, everybody's ovens are different. So, now I'm just going to let it cool. It's not burnt or anything. You can tell it's not, it's just brown. So it's fine. It's not burnt or anything. <laughs> you just had a snackers. Hi. Say hello. 
Can you say hi? So we're going to let this cool and in a little bit I will film how to make a cream cheese, I have a cream cheese frosting recipe that we're going to try. Alright guys, so my cake is cooling. Let's go over here. The bottom's a little bit warm, but I mean it's nothing ridiculous. So I am going to do the cream cheese frosting now. So we're going to come over here because this time, I'll turn on the light here. This time I did not grab, oh my gosh, that's like way up there. I don't even know if you can see me right now. I didn't grab all the ingredients to make it. I did pull the cream cheese out of the fridge a little bit ago um, because it does need to be softened. Um, let's see, and I need to get the butter. Oh, itchy nose. But they say you're going to kiss a fool. I'm sorry if I'm all over the place. I'm not used to using this camera anymore to film. And I'm actually holding the tripod right now because I'm going to set it down. I should have just did that. But then, you know, like, looking at the side of my fridge while I'm getting stuff. So, okay, I've got the butter, powdered sugar, a little bit of milk, a little bit of vanilla, huh? Okay, I'll grab the milk out again. Look at my fridge here. This is my daughter's milk. That's not what I uh, cook with. We are back to using 2%. We're on 1% for a while, but we're on 2 and the whole milk is for my daughter, and I also give it to my son. He's 11, but he don't know no better, and he's like 60 pounds. He's a twig, so he could benefit from the extra fat. Milk. Oh, I think I put the vanilla. Oh, wait. Did I put the vanilla away? I have a tendency to not put stuff away. Oh, I did put the vanilla away. Fun stuff on my fridge so people can see better things than this. I, this is our menu. We make a menu every day and I'll go through that video. I'll do that video later. And then that's what we're going to make for supper one night. Um, anyway, so let's get this started. So I'm going to measure out no, I'm just going to go with how it is in order. One package of soft cream cheese and I don't have I, mean, I didn't buy Philadelphia Thing. This is just from uh, our woodman's up here. It's an employee owned grocery store, so better prices. So, got the entire thing of cream cheese popped in there. Cream with half a stick of butter, or also a measured down to a quarter cup of butter. Quarter cup. Quarter cup. Butter, I use, it's not really even butter, I don't think. I think it's considered the vegetable oil spread. Country crock and original. So, this will teach you. You probably should have took that out and let that get a little softer. But what you gonna do now? You've committed to the process, lady. You can tell it's nice and quiet in my house now. It is <laughs> ten o'clock at night and I'm making frosting. My daughter is asleep. We got to bed late tonight. Normally she's pretty good about getting in bed about eight. Or I'm pretty good about putting her in bed. I should say. Um, but we had a few things come up and so we got to bed late. Okay. Cream cheese. Butter. Get all your butter in there. We're going to use the same mixer, the sunbeam one here, but it does come off the stand so you can use it as a hand mixer little things in here and it says cream soft cream cheese and the butter together so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will be okay. right back. I'm not sure what happened but my camera kicked out and did whatever so what you missed was um, I added about a cup of powdered sugar and blended that and now I am going to be adding 
two tablespoons of milk and a teaspoon of vanilla. So we've got one, two. Where if my camera does it again, I don't know. Like I said, I need to get a new one. So that was the two tablespoons of milk, one teaspoon of vanilla. Oops. Very carefully, slowly start this. Get that mix back together. And now what happens is you very slowly start adding powdered sugar. And like I said, you're going to end up with about three to four cups of powdered sugar. So I'll see if I can do this with one hand. And um, it is market pantry powdered sugar that I'm using. Okay, I don't know why it just keeps dying. So, there is frosting. So we're going <coughs> to turn it down a little bit so you can see better. So let me, before it shuts itself off again. Okay. And what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pour this over the top, really. Just kind of let it go with the flow. This is probably way too much for this. I didn't put all of it on yet, so... This isn't a super thick and stiff frosting. Probably would have been if I would have added more powdered sugar. My husband is diabetic, so this is not going to be the greatest meal for him. Cake. And because it is a cream cheese frosting, obviously I will suggest you put it back in the fridge when you're done with this. You know, some birthday cakes or whatever people leave out. I'm going to put it in there. Plus, I think it might help it firm up. Just a bit. If I had a fresh banana, I'd slice a few slices of banana on top, but I don't. So that is how much... <laughs> still have and I think there's measure markings. You're probably not going to be able to see it. Um, a half a cup is here and a cup and a half is up here. Half and a cup and a half. So I say about a cup left. A bit more. So I will put the lid on that and put it in the fridge. So there is banana cake, my mom's recipes. Hope you guys uh, enjoy and I will try a piece, but hopefully it turned out like my mom, so I know it will be good. So, if you don't have enough powdered sugar, another way to serve this instead of making the cream cheese, or if you don't have cream cheese, is if you just have a little bit of powdered sugar while it's still warm, sprinkle or sift some powdered sugar on there, and it'll kind of melt just a little bit. That's all you got instead of the four cups like I had to do. Um, and that is a good alternative to it. So I'll take myself a slice and let you know when I'm honest. If my food sucks, my food sucks. So stay tuned. Okay, so I've cut my piece. Here's my piece. I put it on my daughter's plate. I'm going to go ahead and have a seat here. Um, looking at it, it looks like I feel it's not going to zoom very or focus very good. I don't know why it does that. You can see the little flex. I don't know if it'll do it if I focus. Let's see if it'll focus. Focus, focus. This camera sucks. Anybody have a good camera to use? I heard Canons were good, but. And I always loved my camera until I started doing videos. Whatever. So. Okay. So. We are going to try it now. So I'll try to make sure I get a good amount of frosting, but not too much.
It is good. That frosting is super sweet. I'm glad I didn't put it on very thick. I was not burnt. Remember it was a little brown. Perfect, the bananas. I'm impressed. I'm happy with myself. So, there you have it. I did it. Yay! Um, stay tuned for my next video, uh, cooking video. Not right, cooking, baking, whatever. I am going to be making a strawberry rhubarb apple pie. That'll be a few days from now because this is going to last as well. So, stay tuned for that. And I have a couple other videos I need to film as well. So, have a good one. Bye.